Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Saya Swag. I'm Kasaya. Today we are going to do this adorable beachcomber handbag. There's a beachcomber handbag and a beachcomber tote. Um, I chose to do the smaller one. This goes along with the other ones that I've done. I've done the coin pouch, the clutch, and the zipper pouch. I think that's it, right? Those three. And now this is the beachcomber tote and handbag. It's super cute. I love it. It's got the same style as the other ones with this whole front. And this one is an actual slip pocket up here. You could do this exterior pocket on both sides. I chose to do one side the pocket and the other side a zipper. I just love having outside zipper pockets. I tend to use those more. Um, the handles, I put on one of the handles incorrectly. It's backwards, but that's what happened, guys. That's what happens when you sew bags. You mess up. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Um, anyways, I love how, I don't know if you can see how this bag handle is attached. It's got these connectors on the inside of the bag. And I chose rectangle rings. You can do gate rings. You can do circular, however you want to do it. You could even do swivel, clasp, whatever. But they're so cute how they're attached on the inside. It's got this recessed zipper panel. Open this up. And inside you have an interior slip pocket, just like your exterior one on one side. And on the other side, you have another zipper pocket. It's nice and roomy. It could carry quite a bit. Um, it's a super cute bag. Yeah, I love it. Um, please enjoy the tutorial and let me know if you guys have any questions. And here we go. Okay, let's go over all our pieces that we need to make this handbag. I am using just a cotton and for my kind of accent pieces, I'm using a waterproof canvas for my inside and some of my pockets. And I'm using a vinyl, like a marine vinyl for my sides, my bottom, and my two front and back panel pieces. So you want to, I already put the foam on my outside gusset pieces. Um, I just basted them on there. So those are my two side pieces and here is my bottom and I already put some feet, cute little feet attached. Okay. And I covered them up so they won't scratch and make holes in my lining piece. So you should have that. I've got my front and back panel pieces. Okay. And then I have my, I am only doing a front exterior pocket. I'm not doing it on both sides. You can do it on both sides if you want, but I am doing a front exterior pocket on one side and I'm doing a zipper pocket on the back side of the bag. So this is going to be my front exterior pocket and that's the other side of it, the lining. And now be careful when you're cutting out the pattern because there are two pieces that look like this in your pattern pieces. One of them says exterior pocket and one of them says slip pocket. So they are different and they are shaped a little bit different. So be careful and pay attention to which is which when you're cutting out the back. And I did um, line my cotton pieces with woven fuse too. I was debating Decaville as well, but I don't think I will because I am going to add foam foam to my panels front and back when I'm done. So I think the woven fuse will be good enough. Um, you should have your, now I did put Decaville light on these pieces. These are your top, um, top band pieces on your bag. I'm not using the vinyl. I'm using this for that. Cause I kind of like that little accent up top. So I did put woven fuse and Decaville light on these pieces just because my cotton was so thin. So we'll see how that turns out. And then you have your handles, okay? And I'm doing the double-sided. It's super cute too. 
the way she does it, I kind of love it. So I've already got one done. I don't have gate rings. Um, so I'm using these rectangle hardwares, but I already did one. It's super cute. And I like the way it's sewn together. You don't have to fold your ends all weird to do your double sided. So I really like that. So I'll show you how I did that. Um, so you should have two handle, complete handle things, and then you should have your little connector pieces for your handles. And then again, I just have the vinyl. My inside pieces are a white waterproof canvas, so I don't have to line them with anything. So I've got my two sides and my bottom there. And then I have my two main inside panel pieces here. And then I have my top, just like we did have on the outside, you need your top band pieces. And I'm using my accent fabric for that. And pockets. So I have my inside pocket pieces all ready to go. I already like drew the little box on them and everything. So this is my inside pocket piece. And then I just took that and I'm doing a outside pocket and I'm doing it in one piece because I don't need to pull the lining through and stitch it up through this one. So it's just one big piece and this is going to go on the back of my bag. Again, you don't have to do that. You can do the double sided um, exterior pockets if you don't want the zipper pocket, but I tend to love a zipper pocket on the outside of my bag. Like I use it a ton for my keys and my phone and just the stuff that I have to reach in and grab really quick. And then this is my interior slip pocket. So it's going inside my bag and it's a little bit different shaped. So pay attention to that. And I have two pieces of those both lined with woven fuse. Well, hardware you need for this bag, it's not much. You need four connectors. They can either be gate rings rectangle uh, connectors, whatever connector you want for your handles. And you have one, two, three zip. Well, I have three zippers. The pattern calls for two zippers, uh, zipper tape. I forgot this piece. This is my recessed zipper panel pieces and you should have four of them. So I have two of this and two of this. And what other hardware do you need? I think that's it. Oh, I have my bag feet, my bag feet hardware. So not a lot of hardware for this bag and we will start by doing the handles. Let's do it. Okay. I already did one handle. So this is my other handle. I'm going to move up my chair. There we go. Um, okay. So I marked my centers. Okay. And then I put tape on and I am going to fold all of it. <laughs> my pen kind of already faded there. Um, I'm going to fold my centers in, my raw edges, okay, and both of them. And I'm not going all the way to the ends here because we're going to sew the raw edges of our cotton lining piece and the raw edges of our vinyl piece together, which... I suppose you could do that before this step too. I don't know if it matters what order you do this, but this is just the way I did my other one. So, so the other thing I changed on this too is the length. I added three e inches to each of these pieces because I like my handles just a little bit longer. I don't want short little handles and I know that I like a little bit extra room when it comes to my over the shoulder handles. So I went ahead and lengthened it. You don't have to do that, but that's just something I did. And I'm sorry for my nails. They look horrible. <laughs> I haven't been to the salon in forever and we were camping all week and I peeled off my little stickers and yeah. I am super sorry. Usually I have my nails nice and pretty. Okay, so do that to both of your handle pieces, both sides. I didn't think about that 
all the way through before I started this video. Okay, so I've done that to both sides. So we are going to get right sides together and we're gonna sew those together just like that at a fourth inch seam allowance. And then finish folding those. I um, I flattened my seam to each side. Okay, just like that. And now you do want to add your connectors right now. Okay, so you want to put on your connectors before you sew this all together. In between the two, if you're doing it this way. Okay. And then you want to take your other side and do your raw ends together. I flatten my seam like that. And then finish folding it in. Okay, so that's what you have now. You've connected the two pieces. So this is really cool. So we want it so our raw edges are in facing each other, right? So our raw edges are gonna be facing each other. You're gonna want your connector piece right there and you want your vinyl or whatever your outside fabric is to be, um, on the inside of the strap, about an inch, I would say. And I kind of even it out all the way. So we're just putting the two straps together, basically. Okay, and we're gonna sew them together now. I hope this is making sense it is a super cool way to do a strap and I just might do all of my straps this way from now on because I love yeah that's about right I love the clean look of it so awesome yep it's about an inch so you want the vinyl to be showing about an inch on each side so that's what we have okay and now we're going to sew it together like you would a normal strap. And I just lengthened my stitching to about um, five. And when I turn and I sew down this way, I'm protecting my vinyl because it has my hardware under it from my walking foot by putting that piece of vinyl there. Because if you don't and you have a walking foot, it will rip your vinyl to shreds.
And that's our other handle. Isn't that cool? So that's what the ends look like. Okay, I'm going to probably burn those ends with a lighter and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we're going to start piecing our front exterior. Um, almost everything in this pattern is sewn at a 3 8 seam allowance, unless otherwise uh, stated. Okay, so we want, yep, even this part. So this is my front and my back to my exterior pocket. And I am just going to piece them right sides together just like this. And I am going to stitch along the angled edges at a 3 8 seam allowance. And that's the end of my tape. That's how I know. And this is the same exact way we did this on the Devon pouch. No, not the Devon pouch. Oh my gosh, I've got my things mixed up. My beachcomber pouch. You did the same thing to put the little pocket on the front of the beachcomber pouch with the little hack. This is where it came from, was this bag. Okay, so once you have that, you wanna turn it out. Okay. And I'm just going to finger press really good and then I'm going to top stitch along what we just did. Just like in the beachcomber pouch. And if you have all cotton, go ahead and take it to an iron and press that. That is your exterior pocket. Ta-da! Okay, we're going to take it with our front piece and we are going to baste it along our edges. I'm just doing some little clips so they don't move here. And you always baste at about an eight inch seam allowance is basting and top stitching. Okay, so there's our cute little front. Oh, and we want to do the top too here. Top stitch that on so it doesn't go anywhere. We are going to sew that down with the top piece, but I like to top stitch that down so it doesn't move. Okay, and then here's my top panel piece. And I am going to stitch that on at a 3 8 seam allowance. Ah, I 
scissors flying off. All right. And then we're gonna flip it so the panel, the main panel seam is folded up towards the top and we're gonna top stitch that down. I got a little thread poking out there. All right. That's our front panel. Oh, that's cute. Look how big and cute that is. I'm going to add my nameplate here. And I'm actually going to baste my foam on first and I'm going to add my nameplate here. I am going to show you, I've got my back panel kind of done. I just cut out the whole piece for it. Cause I wanted to show you, somebody asked me, um, when you put a pocket on your outside piece that needs foam, how do you do that? Well, you cut out around the zipper pocket. So when the pattern doesn't already have it set and shown you where to cut it, this is what I do. So here's my prepared zipper uh, piece right here. And before I add my zipper, I put it on top of my foam, right? I put it on top of my foam that I'm gonna use for it. And I mark out this piece. I'm going to take my foam and I'm going to cut like probably a half inch bigger on all sides of this so my zipper pocket can pull through my foam because you don't want this foam bulk in your zipper when you're sewing it. And then your zipper pocket piece isn't stuck between the foam and your main panel. I hope that makes sense. I thought I would try and explain that. So just like this, and it doesn't have to be exact. It can be whatever. So when I go to put my foam on, I will have my zipper, sorry, this is kind of crazy, go through my foam like this. Just like that. And see, my foam's on, but my pocket is on the outside of my foam and not stuck in between the foam and the exterior. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I am going to put on this zipper pocket real quick. Where's my zipper piece? Sorry, just a second. I'm going to finish this zipper pocket and then I'll do my foam. So here's my zipper. I have my double sided tape. I'm just going to take it off the bottom piece first. just like that and then I'm going to sew that on and I like to start down here in the corner
zipper sewn on there. And then I'll close up my zipper. Okay, so there's my zipper pocket on my outside piece that I added instead of doing the other pocket. And then my foam hopefully will fit. Stick your pocket through. Hopefully I cut my rectangle the right size. If not, I can adjust it. Looks good. There. See? And it goes right through. Okay, I'm going to base those on and then we will continue to the next step. Okay, so next we're going to just uh, put our gusset together. So I already did all my foam and everything. I did not add Peltex to the bottom of my bottom. If you wanted a more stiff bottom, you totally could. But my vinyl's pretty thick, so I'm just leaving it with some foam. Okay, so you wanna sew your side pieces together, three eighths seam allowance. I'm gonna go on the other side. machine here. There we go. And then you want to top stitch those. I'm going to fold it towards my seam allowance towards the base and top stitch on the base. Same thing on the other side. Okay, and that's your gusset. And I am going to clip my centers real quick because that's always helpful when you put together your bag that has a gusset piece. And I already clipped all my centers on my outside um, exterior pieces. So those are all clipped. All right, so let's go to our recessed zipper. Now, I've said this before, there's a million ways to do recessed zippers. I've learned three different methods. I'm just doing the one that I prefer. Um, Carissa has an awesome way of doing it as well. And I did it in one of my patterns. I think I did her method in the Beachcomber Pouch tutorial. So if you want to see her method, go to that video. Um, she does this the same way though. I'm going to fold down my one end at a 90 degree angle. So you mark evenly across your zipper. I do an inch down 
and you pinch and you bring your zipper down. So here, and I pinch and I bring my zipper down right there. Sorry again for my gross nails that need done. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Salons are not my favorite place to go right now. Wearing a mask for an hour and a half sitting there is not fun for me. So, okay. So you just want to baste that down. And I usually do one stitch and then I can take my pin out. And I'm just basting at the edge of the zipper with that. And then you wanna cut all your threads and you wanna even this out and burn, melt your which one did I do this one? Melt the end that you just cut or else it'll fray and unravel and you don't want that, okay? So now I have it even up there. Um, I'm not doing a zipper, um, a, a fabric zipper stop. I'm gonna do a metal zipper stop. So I just stitched my zipper closed right there. All right, so for my recessed panel pieces. I cut them an inch shorter than the pattern because I'm doing it this way. If you're doing it her way, that's fine. If you do it this way, about an inch shorter total. Not on each side, just an inch shorter. And then I put a piece of double-sided tape. I'm just gonna take that off and I'm going to fold it down the same width as that tape is, just like that. And I'm going to try and do that as evenly as possible on all four, or all, <laughs> all of my pieces, all four of my pieces, okay? And this, again, is just the method I like to use. Carissa also has a video on Needle and Anchor Company has a video supply, Needle and Anchor Supply Company, I need to say it correctly, um, has a video on how to do her method of the recessed zipper as well. And I will try to remember to link it in my description below if you would like to see it. It is a great method. I am just used to doing my pieces this way. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I take my zipper and I want to start it, I go about a fourth inch down, about where that fold is, is where I start sewing on my actual zipper. And I'm going to baste it because I'm a big believer in basting this part because I don't want it to shift. So my zipper is right side down and um, my exterior piece is right side up. You don't have to baste it if you're pretty um, confident. But I don't know about that. I feel like things just tend to shift. Okay, and then I'm going to, did I do that right? Yeah, dot. Add my inside piece on top there and make a sandwich. And you want to line up your edges as best as possible. So hopefully, hmm, hopefully they line up evenly as you go down.
and I'm just clipping it all the way down to see. Oh yeah, look at that. It's totally even. Perfect. Okay, and then so that I do mine at a fourth inch seam allowance. Because that's about as close as I can get with this non-zipper foot. So once that's on, you want to fold it and you're going to fold these pieces down and match these sides up and top stitch. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to top stitch down here and along here. Okay, and that's our first side of our zipper. Just like that. Okay, so now you wanna go do the other side. So I like to zip mine all the way up to make sure I'm lining it up evenly. Make sure you have the right piece going on the right side of your zipper. Mine's about right there. And once you have it clipped into place, you can unzip. And again, I'm just going to top stitch my zipper on first. I mean baste, sorry. Baste and top stitch, I mix up all the time. I know the difference. <laughs> but I just say the same thing. Ugh. Sorry. And then add your other piece on. Right sides together. So those. Fold those out 
and top stitch. And that is your zipper at the top. So zip that up. Make sure it lines up. Looks pretty good. I am going to clip my centers on that real quick. It just helps when I'm putting it all together. Just a tiny little snip, nothing big. Teeny tiny enough for you to see. All right, and then let's go on to the next step. Okay, let's put the zipper pocket onto your lining. So I have my zipper pocket piece, it comes in two pieces. I am going to leave the pocket open on my bag so I can reach through and um, sew up the lining through it nicely. So I am going to leave mine open-ended. It wants about an inch down from the top of your panel, which that's about right. So I've got it about an inch down and my rectangle is about an inch down. And then we're going to go ahead and sew that on. I'm going to do her method of zipper pocket. I haven't, I tend to see my um, pocket piece show through a bit when I do it this way, but I'm gonna try it again. So I'm just going to do two straight lines. I'm not gonna go down um, the sides here for my pocket. Because usually I do a full rectangle, but I'm just doing the long lines and seeing if I like that any better. That's how her instructions are. She just wants you to do the two lines down here. So let's do it like the pattern and see what happens. Let's cut that open. And you're still cutting the same way. Let's turn it through. I'm going to go take this to my iron, my iron, and press it really carefully. And then I'll put in my zipper piece. Okay. I just did a light press on it. It looks really nice. I like how the corners are. 
So that is definitely a good method to do. All right, so I'm just gonna add my zipper. Like that, and then we'll top stitch around the zipper. I know I'm using black thread on white, so <laughs> hopefully I don't mess up too bad. It's just such a pain to sit and change your thread out. And I like the contrast of a darker thread. Makes my pocket. I like it. Okay. And then I'm going to add the back side of my pocket. And I already ironed up my ends, so I'll be able to close those easily. Again, you don't have to leave your pocket open. You can just pull through your lining and close up your lining. I just tend to like this method because it leaves a clean lining. So this is just really a matter of preference. Set that aside. There's that. And then we'll work on our slip pocket on the other side. And we do that just the same exact way that we did our um, outside exterior pocket. So we're going to right sides together and we're going to stitch three eighths along that um, edge right here. Again, these pieces are a little bit different. Your interior slip pocket and your exterior pocket pattern pieces may look the same at glance, but they are different. So you do need to use both of them. All right, and then turn that right side out and top stitch.
Okay, and then baste that to your exterior or interior lining. So there's our interior slip pocket. So we've got a zipper pocket. Oh, I'm gonna whoops, stitch that top down too. Let's flop all over the place there. I'm gonna cut my center down at the bottom here real quick. Okay, so now we wanna do our top band pieces, but before um, you just sew those right on, we have to put our connectors. And if you're doing the handles the way I did, you have to do the handles. So let me get those couple pieces real quick. There's that. And there's my handles. Okay. All right, here's my pieces. And you know, I think since these are having connectors on them, I think I'm gonna go and cut these out of vinyl. I think they'll be more sturdy if I use vinyl. So I'll be right back. Okay, for our next step, I, I just, instead of cutting out vinyl, I added a layer of Decaville Light just because my cotton was so thin. And if I'm attaching the connectors to it, I want it to be more sturdy. Um, I don't know if you have to, but that's what I did. So, okay, so you want your two top inside panel pieces. You wanna mark in one and three fourths. I don't know if you can see my little purple line. I don't know if it shows. One and three fourths. I'll break this over somewhere. Sorry, I'm just trying to get more light in here. There we go. Um, and that's where we're gonna put each of our connectors. Now, the trick is, if you have handles like I do, we're adding them now. If you have gate rings, you don't have to add them yet. Um, you wanna make sure that when you put them on your lining or contrast piece is facing up because your handles are gonna be on the bag like that. And so you want your vinyl to be facing out. So I'm going to top or I'm going to baste that. There's the my line and I'm doing it to the right of the line and I'm gonna baste that on. And then I'm gonna slide this on just like that and baste it on the other side. So my handle is attached. I hope that makes sense. I've never seen handles this way and I think it's a really cool, um, unique way to do it. I like it. Okay, so you want to do the same on your other side. So I'm basting just inside that line. And then I want to slide my handle in there. Oh, wrong way. Right? See, because that's going to be your inside piece. Awesome. All right, go ahead and do that to the other top panel. Same exact process.
my other handle. Slide it in there. Okay, and now we're going to attach this to our lining. Actually, before we do that, I forgot to sew my gusset pieces together. So I'm gonna do that really quick for my lining. Okay, these are my lining gusset pieces. Should have just done that when I did my outside one and I forgot. That's okay. So there's my gusset for my lining. And I'm just going to clip my centers real quick. All right, so there's my lining. So now, move this down just a little bit. Now we're going to attach this. So we want the zipper panel. Oh, I'm going to center this real quick. I'm just clipping all my centers. sides. Okay. All right. So you want your zipper panel right side up. Zipper pull to the left with the lining with the slip pocket. Okay. And we're going to match our centers up there and we're going to baste that down first. So we want this top band piece face down and we're going to center that up as well right here. And we're going to sew that at a 3 8 seam allowance. And then we're 
gonna flip it up and we're gonna top stitch it. All right. And I think, do we wanna do it this way or this way? Does it say? We wanted, sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. Maybe not, oh, okay. Got a little thread there again. Okay, so you wanna fold this up and we're going to top stitch that. So we're top stitching over this um, piece right here, this connector piece. So I'm gonna have to be careful not to tear that with my foot. nice and slow. Super cute. So that's what one of the linings looks like with your zipper. Okay, go ahead and repeat that for your other side. I think I already, yep, I already snipped my. So you want a pocket lining piece up, a zipper panel piece up, clip and baste that on. your other handle or your other top band here. Three eighths inch seam allowance. So now we're gonna put our, oh no wait, now we gotta top stitch that. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Don't forget to top stitch that second one. No, which way did I do it? This way. Okay. So our lining pieces are done. And now we just need to add the gussets to both of them. Ta-da! Okay, they should be connected just like that. All right. Okay, quick little, quick little edit on these handles that I just did. So I said it's important to make sure they're facing out, and it is, but when you're just doing it on the band, it doesn't matter which way you put them on. It matters which way you're sewing your band on. So which direction. So when you sew this top band with the handles onto your lining, you're putting it on top of your zipper and sewing it on, you need to pay attention to which way your handles are facing. That's what I did wrong 
on this one. I wasn't paying attention to which direction I was sewing the band on. So I sewed it upside down and then this handle ended up backwards. So I'm going to take this handle off and make a new one and sew it on the right way. But I just wanna show you what my mistake was. So pay attention to your handles and the way that they're on when you sew them onto your lining. And that will determine what direction your handles are facing. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and clip our gusset and sew it to our exterior pieces. So I have clipped all of my centers on everything so I know where to start clipping. Okay, so I'm gonna clip along my bottom. Um, one thing I didn't, I forgot to mention about this foam in the facing. If you have a domestic, you need to use the pieces that she has for your foam interfacing because you need to cut it out of your seams. I have a domestic and it doesn't really, my machine can handle it. Um, I mean, I have an industrial. Did I say that? Oh my gosh, guys. I have an industrial and my machine can handle the foam, but if you have a domestic, you need to cut the foam out of your seam allowances. And I don't even think I need to clip my curves on this bag. It doesn't seem like it perfect. It eases in there really nicely. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna go up to this side. I'm just going to show you one side of doing this gusset and then I'll probably time lapse the other side. Okay, so you always want to sew gusset side up want your gusset to be looking at you and I'm going to switch my camera mm, to the other angle because it's better okay you can just see what I'm doing easier at this angle for the gusset all right so 3 8 seam allowance just like we've been doing on the whole thing on this exterior okay I'm going to go ahead and do a second row of stitching just so my um, stitches don't pull and um, show through when you turn the bag out. It just relieves some stress on those initial line of stitches. So I've done this on the last couple bags and I really think it's just what I'm going to do on my outside pieces from here on out. So here's my second row of stitching.
Oh, I wonder if I should not do it so close to the top. I'm going to not do it as much at the top so it lays flat. Okay. All right. Does she want you trimming that down at all? Yeah. She says to trim that down a little bit. Now, I'm not trimming up here because when we um, attach our lining and sew around, it's our top stitching goes better. If we can lay this seam out, um, it reduces our bulk a little bit. So you want to have, you don't want to trim this top part down really to, like to a fourth of an inch. Leave that as is but you can trim the rest of this down to a fourth inch seam allowance. All right, and then go ahead. And that's what that looks like all pieced together. Can you see that? And we're gonna go ahead and attach the other piece. Okay, so once our exterior is all done and turned out, you're going to work on your interior, your lining panel. So you're going to do the same exact thing that you did to your outside. You get your lining panel, you get your gusset, you center them up, you clip them. The only difference is that when you sew, you're starting out at the 3 8 seam allowance, and then you're going to widen to about a 5 8 and you're going to go around. You are going to leave a hole in the bottom to turn it through. It says it's about an eight inch hole in the bottom. I'm going to do it on my other piece because I don't want to do it on the piece with my zipper because then it's harder to pull through my pocket. But if you're just pulling it through your lining and sewing up your lining, do it on the side with your pocket piece because you don't want that bulk on the one that you um, stitch up. Does that make sense? I don't know. Okay, so I'm starting at that three eighths for a couple inches and then I'm going to, and make sure you don't get your um, recessed zipper panel in there. It shouldn't, it should be shorter and it shouldn't go in there, but just be careful. And then just sew at that three eighths, or not that three eighths, that five eighths seam allowance. And then don't forget to go back up to the three eighths at the very end. I have forgotten to do that before. Went back to that three seam allowance there. All right, and then go ahead and put your 
other side on. Make sure you're not twisted or anything with your panels. Um, I do unzip mine all the way when I'm doing this and it makes it easier. And then just put those on. Let's try this again. Leave a hole in the bottom. Okay, so we've got our both our panels done. So we wanna make sure your zipper is unzipped all the way. Handles are down out of the way. You're gonna take your exterior, place it inside your lining. I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> My watch thinks I'm talking to it. <laughs> All right, put it inside, make sure it's the way you want it. Match all your top seams, clip them into place. I'll shut my bag a little bit through my opening down here. Helps it fit. Okay, and I'm going to lay my seams flat just like that and match up my seams and clip those first. And then you just want to do it on both sides. Kind of have to scrunch your bag. Some people do it the opposite way with your, and put your lining inside your exterior. It doesn't matter. Although I feel like when you have a pocket on your lining, this is the best way to do it. If you leave a pocket open on your exterior, you could do it the other way. It doesn't matter which way you put your bags together, as long as they're right sides together, they'll come out okay. So I'm just matching my seams up and clipping them. Okay, and then I'll Put the rest of my bag along here, down there. Right, and then I'm going to sew that at a 3 8 inch seam allowance before I turn it. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna check my bobbin real quick. Whew, 
Yeah, we need a new thread. Let me get a new one. All right, let's sew this up. Sorry, I'm just trying to get you at the right angle. Let's see what I'm doing here. Don't be afraid to bend your bag under there either. It won't hurt it. Do try and keep your seams open though. It'll help with your top stitching. Just a minute. This one came unclipped. I'm just gonna fix it real quick. I think I'm going to just go over where my connectors are real quick. Well, actually, no, I think they'll be okay because we're top stitching as well. And that gives it another layer of protection there with your stress that you put on it. Okay, so now we turn it through. Yay! Okay, so now that we have it turned right side out, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to sew up our lining. So I am going to take my zipper pocket and I'm going to pull my lining through it. And if you didn't leave your zipper pocket open, then just sew your lining up. But I am doing it this way. Okay, once you have that sewn up, push that back through, pull it back through one of the two.
And then you want to sew up your lining. Not your lining, your pocket. Oh my goodness. And you want to sew up your pocket. After that is sewn up, all you have to do is top stitch. So we'll do that real quick. Push that back through. Oh, and I do have to put on a zipper stop, so I'll do those two things. All right. Push your lining all the way in. Just like that, okay? Because you're gonna want it down like that. And we're going to just roll out your little seam there with your fingers as best you can. You can also, um, before you closed up your holes, you could do that really good too and push them out from the inside, which I kind of did. usually don't have to deal with my handles attached. Just make sure your handles are out of your way. definitely don't want to have your foam in these seams up here. I may stop and start right here and just put two rivets right there. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't want to risk ripping my foam. <clears throat> I should have. My foam. Oh my gosh, you guys. I keep saying the wrong things. I don't want to risk destroying my vinyl. Okay. So we're going to top stitch around this and then put our zipper stop on and we're done. So I am going to very carefully, got some threads right there, just a second. Got a lot of loose threads. All right. Back to a five. I am going to make sure my handles are in my bag. Here, and my hardware is out of my way there. Okay, make sure your hardware is out of your way. 
and I'm going to top stitch. And I'm going to move you. Sorry, I should have kept. Kept you over here. And now I'm going to put this under here to make sure my feed dogs don't rip into my vinyl. your hardware's out of your way. I'll slide this under there so I don't rip into it. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll put two rivets here. I probably could attempt to go over the sides. I just don't want to risk ripping my vinyl right there. But it looks great. It's good on that side. Okay. Let's go to this side. Make sure your hardware's out of your way. If you're using all cotton, you don't, you won't have this uh, issue with vinyl. I'm just being extra cautious. Here. Got no loose threads hanging. Don't get your vinyl with your lighter. I've done that many times. Don't get your fingers with your lighter. <laughs> I've done that. Oh, okay. I am going to go put two rivets on each side of this on um, my gussets and my zipper stop on and I'll be right back. Okay guys, we're all done. I put a couple of little rivets on my side panels there where I didn't sew over, which you can do if you have issues on your domestic sewing over your thick seams. That's a great alternative. I just didn't want to risk ripping my vinyl on this one. And I did a zipper stop and I realized 
I put the handle on wrong. Um, there's my zipper stop. Super cute. Tuck that in. Um, I sewed this handle on the wrong way. I did. I got all the way to the end till I realized it. So see how they both are. <laughs> and you turn it that way. They're both like that. Maybe it's a new style. No, I'll probably go back and I'll probably go back and fix that. But that's what happens. We make mistakes. Um, it's still a super cute bag. I absolutely love this pattern. It turned out great. I don't know if you can tell. It's a good size. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And now I've done all the beachcomber bags. So you guys can make a whole set of beachcomber bags. Um, use my link below in the description to purchase the pattern. And I'll put try and put all the links that are helpful down there. Let me know if you have any questions. And please like and subscribe for more videos and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.